Do you know that as a Long Beach High School student, you are eligible for a membership at Keesler Federal Credit Union? Keesler Federal is more than a bank. It's a credit union and a not-for-profit financial cooperative. This means you share in the ownership. We work to help you prosper, not investors. Keesler Federal offers a wide variety of financial products and services, great rates and extra benefits, such as free checking and savings account, free online and mobile banking, and an annual savings contest. So come in with a parent and talk to one of our friendly team members about what Keesler Federal can do for you. When you join, you are a member for life, and we will be there for every step of your financial journey. Going the extra mile for our members since 1947, Keesler Federal Credit Union, where you are more than a customer, you are family. Glass Doctor is a proud supporter of Long Beach Schools. Call Glass Doctor for all your home, auto, and business glass needs. Call the Glass Doctor, we'll fix your pains. Oh, yeah! to the Coaches Show featuring head football coach Jacob Massey. We're in Long Beach, Mississippi. I'm Tony McGill. This is Tim Delaney, my partner. We're going to talk a little football, coach. You're in Division 6. It's a tough division in South Mississippi. Division 6, Region 4, Picayune, Pascagoula, George County, Hancock, and West Harris. Yep. How do I remember all that? <laughs> I'll tell you. But we talked about it. We've talked about this on every show, and now we're going through it. The toughest division, it's, it, you know, LSU finishes with Arkansas. Go right back into Auburn, and then go to Alabama, and this is much like what we're experiencing at our level. This is SEC football on, the, on the South. Well, a lot of these kids are going to be playing SEC football. Yeah, they football. all got <laughs> Division One offers. I mean, yeah. you can't argue that. So, well, uh, we've seen some of the best football players in the state. In the state. Uh, we started off with a jamboree. Uh, Green County's quarterback, Colby mm-hmm. King, is he's leading the state in mm-hmm. passing right now. Yeah. So we saw him, and we saw him spread it out. Multiple, I don't know, Division One mm-hmm. receivers, a couple of there on that team. You've seen uh, George County's uh, Deuce Knight, mm-hmm. the quarterback, with uh, – uh, he he's uh, signed at Auburn, mm-hmm. you know, was a commit to uh, Notre Dame's and number four ranked quarterback in the nation. You come right back with Silas Corder and uh, from Pascagoula, and he's already a Southern Miss. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you've got a tough division. Coach. Yeah, we face three <laughs> of the top passers probably in the state of Mississippi, you know, and they're talking about Deuce Knight, you know, being probably one of the best quarterback prospects that's come out of the state of Mississippi. In, in our entire history of football, which is saying a lot, because you got the Brett Favre's and you got the um, Shane Matthews. Shane Matthews. Yeah. You've got um, uh, Jason Campbell that went to Auburn from Taylorsville. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's been uh, Taylorsville was what a two A school yeah. back then. Mm-hmm. Kevin Fant. Kevin Fant. Kevin Fant. So, at know, Moss you, Point. You've got a, a, a lot of a, a lot of rich history, you know, with the state of Mississippi, and then you're seeing some of these kids come out uh, and. 
It's not going to get any easier this Friday night, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, you go from the quarterbacks, mm-hmm. and you're not going to get a lot of numbers at Picky Union. They run that eye. It's a form. Of, it's, it's almost a wing T out of the eye formation. Just a power formation. I, I run into their offensive line coach one day, and he says, "We don't run eye. We line up in an eye, but we don't run a lot eye." <laughs> And, and you'll see that. You'll see the quarterback blocking a lot on a little mm-hmm. quick pitch off tackle. And uh, I've always admired that because, you know me, yeah. I'm an mm-hmm. eye formation guy. But you're going to run from three of the top quarterbacks in the state probably to the best running back in the state, mm-hmm. a three-star, uh, numerous offers, Darrell Smith's his name. And, uh, you know, I looked, and I was telling you before the show, I forgot my iPad, and I had all the stats and everything mm-hmm. ready, so we're going to kind of wing it here. But uh, got to be close to uh, – yeah, man, scored four touchdowns the other night. So. Yeah, he had 14 carries for 284 yards. It's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, every time he touches the ball, and, and all the game films that we have on him, every time he touches the ball, you know, you're sitting there holding your breath to wait to see what he's fixing to do. He's going to have a chance uh, to take it to the house no matter where, where he is. He had a – a 99-yard touchdown run the other night on, on a little option play uh, that they had against West Harrison. And uh, not to take anything away from Dowdell or, or Chris Davis, you know, I got to see both of those guys play my first two years. First but two. Yep. Th- this kid, is yep. he, he's better than those two kids. I, I really believe that. And, um, you know, and that's saying a lot. Those two are playing. You know, Dowdell went to Oregon, and now he's starting running back for Nebraska. Nebraska. And then Chris Davis is getting a lot of carries um, for Stanford. Yep. So, um, to say that you know, I think that he's better than those two is not a knock on those two, but right. um, it just tells you how good of a kid, uh, how good of a player he is. But um, he's he's very wiggly. Uh, you know, the first person is not going to tackle him. No, um, and it's going to take probably uh, you know nine or ten guys to bring him down just because he can. He can he can make somebody miss in a phone booth. Well, we watched film on him here the other day, and I'm telling you, he'll go forward. And he'll take three steps mm-hmm. back and shoot that mm-hmm. way and, and with great speed, and he's strong. He's been in the weight room. Yeah. Uh, they've got a great program up there. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, Dodd Lee, won, I think Dodd Lee won three state championships up there, and uh, uh, Coach Stogner's won two, yeah. two of the last mm-hmm. three here in the state of Mississippi. So and I think he lost one. He lost in the state championship. He was, at, he was there, yeah, mm-hmm. to West Point. So we're, you're not dealing with you, – you, if you want to see good football, a foot, good football team that really – and, you know, in their communities now, it, it, it takes – I think they have eight state championships. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden there's a new field house. They've redone the whole stadium. And it, it's a look that uh, – it's kind of exciting to yeah. go to. So it's a good program. And uh, uh, I know a lot of those kids uh, have moved in from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So they're not just homegrown kids. They've – there's no NIL deals going on at Picky Hume, but they uh but they, they attract good kids. When you got a winning program like mm-hmm. that, you're gonna attract the kids. No doubt. Uh I know uh Dodd Lee coached for twenty eight years. If he'd have stayed on, I was thinking about this the other day, if he'd have stayed on another five years, he could have been the uh one of the winningest coaches in the state mm-hmm. of Mississippi as far as state championship. So and I and I and you know, I've gone out to eat with Dodd Lee and Coach D'Angelo and a bunch of us, Coach Ross, uh back in the day, Mark Ross. Mm-hmm. And uh, got to be good friends, and and because of my oldest son Jason, he he, he always paid a lot of attention to mm-hmm. Jason and give him his time. So Irvin Favre used to eat with us, Brett Favre's dad. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of history there with Picky Uh People don't know this, you know it, you know it, but Jimmy Johnson mm-hmm. won two Super Bowls. Well, he started at Picky. He sure did. He we were Picayune. talking about it the other day, and I think he was an assistant coach there, and they actually went zero and ten. Uh, his his one and only year at Picking. So it's time to move on. Yeah, time to move on. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, we, we we had one last week against Pascagoula. We had a couple of uh, what do you call blimps in the in what we wanted to do there and some mishaps. Uh, the kicking game really really killed us. Uh, you know, we were talking the other day. I think that there was eleven kickoffs and nine of them were onside kicks uh never seen anything like it the one kickoff we that wasn't an onside kick we actually you know kicked it deep uh you know but that was one of those things that they were able to take advantage of and uh something that we hadn't seen on film hadn't seen them kick one onside kick and all the films that we had on them and uh the other night you know they kicked you know i think it was seven onside kicks and, and they were able to get uh 
four or five of them, if I remember right. But, you know, that that's the difference in the game right there, just the simple fact that they got four extra possessions. Four possessions. Um, you know, and that's the name of the game in football is, you know, how many possessions uh, are you going to get. And, how, you know, I felt like we moved the football very well. Yes. On, you know, we got into the red zone twice and didn't come away with scores. So, you know, uh, if, if you look at that, I know we're not dealing with, with ifs and buts and whats, but, uh, you know, that's that's three three more touchdowns right there, and you're looking at you know a fifty thirty five a fifty forty two game, which could have been another barn burner like we had last year, um, but but that's on us. Our kids didn't make the plays. Uh, we didn't have to prepare for the onside kick, and that all ultimately falls on me. And um, but I, I was proud of the way our kids competed, and uh, thought they played hard for four quarters. And uh, I was really impressed with our offense. I thought we were able to make some plays. Uh, you know, Will Brady and, and Andre were able to hook up on some some really yep. long key passes that, that we had been working on and had put in all week, and, and I thought they really had a, a really good ball game. Probably the most uh, important thing from the other night was Will handled the option very well. You know, he was able to pull it. I think he had 83 yards rushing. Um, not only did he pull it and hurt them on the edge, but he also he pulled it a couple times and pitched it um, and, and put us in a position to win. So I, I've just been very pleased with Will Brady and his decision making uh, in the option. We, you know, we talked about after the season he was probably at a sixty percent efficiency rate, uh, and we wanted him to be around seventy five. So this off season, that was something that we really looked at. It's and hard. He's he's operating at a, at an eighty eight eighty nine efficiency rate at quarterback, whether it be throwing the football or operating in the option. So can't ask good any ball more. Player. Good he is ball a good ball player. player. Great he's been kid. Really good for us and. You know the the option I think really is tailor made for him, and it's been it's been good to him, and it's been good to us. Now, <clears throat> offensively, you're going to see picky units off tackle, off tackle, mm-hmm. off tackle. They might throw the ball seven or eight times, mm-hmm. and they uh, and we're still on offense. Well, but, if we get them to throw it seven or eight times, we're going to be in business because yeah. I think they're more around one or two they times. Don't want to it. Well, well, <clears throat> what they do is they'll slam it, yeah. slam it, slam it, and then they've got one sitting up yeah. there in the flats, and they just toss it to him and well, he and, runs. And I'm going to tell you, they're they're completely different, uh, so to speak, on offense this year than they have been in the past. Uh, you know, they, they're going to try to put uh, the the um, Smith kid in a position to where. Uh, you know, he can kind of read his blocks and set up his blocks, whereas in the past, they're putting him on a track, on yeah, a power were, track. They, they were a gap better offense. Hit that dra- no doubt. better hit that track. They've gone to more base blocking or, or more more of, you know, like a an outside zone type zone deal that we talked technique, about. Yeah. Uh, just to give him the option to say, hey, if he's got a hole, he can fit it up in there. If nothing's there, hey, you use your athletic ability to get outside and make a play. So there is – and what I say is they're different is I think there's a little bit more freedom in their offense to do some of those things to kind of highlight his skill. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, you know, and, and and he's not the only one. You know, they played four tailbacks Friday night against West Harrison. And here's the, the really where I think their team is at. And it's just kind of tell you uh, how talented they they're are. They're not going to lose a step. They go to number three. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tight ball game. I wow. think it's, you know – I can't remember what the score was, but the, the final was 69 to, to 50 or 51. So you're talking about a two-possession game, and they're playing their third string and fourth string running back, and they're scoring. So just to kind of tell you where, they are, at, where they are at skill-wise. Well, up front's where they're going to get you. I mean, they're yes. offensive mm-hmm. linemen or something. You can talk about their tailback all the time, but when you get to the football game and Delaney well, always I'm, gets his little I'm, walk around. I'm going to cut in right now because I'm glad you finally brought that up. You guys are talking about all the great players that you have played against, mm-hmm. and you're only talking about skill guys. What about those guys yeah, up front right. you're playing against? How many that's of those right. guys, you know, you're, they're the always level. ignored. Yeah, 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 they're always ignored. Yeah. But when you look at them on film, I can say, yeah, I mean, I might could waddle through there for four or five yeah. yards, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah that's um, right. And so they got some up front players picking those on both sides of the ball. They do. They're t- as had Pascagoula. Their tight end is a really good football player. You can tell that he's uh, – and he's a lot like our tight end. You know, they're not putting him out there to throw him the football. Yeah, right. Um, he comes off the ball really hard, number 18. He's a really good football player. Uh, and they've got some really key pieces on that offensive line that they brought back from last year. So, um, you know, it's definitely going to uh, create some mismatches, uh, you know, with our defense. And, and we've got to be really good about – reading those blocks and, and kind of deciphering what they're trying to do on the offensive end of the football. Well, their star, the four-star defensive end you're talking about, <laughs> Noah Wilson, I think is his name, uh, has offers from Alabama, mm-hmm. LSU, Auburn, 
Tennessee. You just go ahead and say everybody in the country. Everybody in the country is wanting Noah, so Nolan Wilson. Yeah. There, in fact, may be your best player in the yeah. state. Yeah. Well, and I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell you, uh, you know, kind of he he jumped off a of film a lot like the Darnell Smith tailback kid, but the West Harrison kid breaks away on a long run. I'm talking about, you know, a 50, 60 yard run, and he's the weak side defensive end, and he comes around the formation. And he gets within about three steps of this kid chasing him down. Oh, wow. And he's 6'4", 250, 260 pounds. The West Harrison kid, number 45, is a phenomenal football player. Yeah, they got some yeah. And he backs. can go. I mean, some. he's probably a 4'5", you know, maybe even a 4'49 guy. Him. And this kid is step for step gaining <laughs> ground on him. So just to tell you, that type of kid, that that's big, that can run like that, you know, that, that that's an issue. You're going to you're gonna check your runs to, to which side you're going to. I'm, I'm, not gonna give, I'm not going to give away everything that we're going to do, but uh, we're going to try check to run away me. from Noah, Noah as much as possible. You know? I think every, goes every coach saying. they play in probably yeah. has the same plan. Yeah. Well, we had one like that or one, one time, and we had a uh, – uh, he went to Tennessee, and now his name escapes me, and my boys are going to kill me. But we had to ended up putting mm. him in the middle, even though he was a big defensive end, because they run away from him. Yep. So, yeah, it, it, it goes without saying. Ben, and I can't think of his name. Uh, goes to Tennessee, and I can't think of his name. That's strong. I understand That's one. strong. <laughs> strong. But anyway, Picky Union are 6-2. and two. We're 2-6. Two and six. They're 2-0 and oh in the division. We haven't won a division game yet. Well, we go to Picky Union this week. And, uh, uh, it's, you know, and you don't want to go up against them, but as a fan and as a spectator, you like to see a good program. Well, like and I that. told our kids this week that you, you ought to see this every team we did George Counties, the Pascagoulas, and the Picayunes. Look, there's been a college coach on the sideline for the yes. last Auburn two was weeks. Here last week. Fixing to be three weeks. Yeah. So I, I, I challenged our kids, you know, like, look, this is an opportunity. If you want to play big time college football, you want to play against these kids. Well, yeah. That, yeah. Guess what? <laughs> You got to play against the best. Nolan yeah. Wilson's film is fixed to be watched yeah. for the next five to that's six right. months. Right. That's right. So if you want to, and that's stick him one time football, and get their attention. <laughs> you got it. You, you got coach it. college football. You got five plays to yeah. get his attention. That's right. And so if you don't get him in five plays. He's moving on to somebody. You else. know, that's what wow. I told our kids. You know, you need to look at this as an opportunity, and um, you know, if we could just clean up the kicking game a little bit, not have so many penalties on, on the offensive side of the ball. Jumping off sides like the other night, we went. We were third and two, which you know as well as I do. Youngsters, Option football. Yeah. That's oh great. yeah, that's, that's a great. Gimmick. Thank you. That's where we want to be. We want to be three and we want to be third and two, not third and seven. We jump off sides. Luckily, we were able to pick up the first down. But in the style of offense that we play, we can't get behind the. It took chains. you out of your rhythm. It takes you out of your rhythm. You have to go dig into your playbook. Yes, do we want to throw the football? We do, but we want to throw the football. On your first down, first and ten, we want to throw the football on second and five. When you want to, when not I, when you have to. That's right. So, um, th- well, that's, you don't want to say anything negative either about any of the kids, but that comes from immaturity. That comes from having to play a freshman mm-hmm. or a sophomore, well, sure. and sure. not your yeah. seniors that we got hurt. This, this, our whole football program kind of got a little turnaround. We had a successful uh, summer, mm-hmm. spring training. Everything's clicking. Everything's looking good. And then start with the injury bug, and we talk about that every week. And I don't want to dwell on that. We're well, it's not trying hard. To make... It's hard not to talk about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and our kids know that. But you, you look. If you have S.J. and Jaden last week, whenever uh, the quarter kid was back there throwing it, Fode's one step away from picking those passes yeah. off. As a coach, you S.J.'s got him. What if? I mean, you, more you know, you want to say what if and, and well, nose for the ball. It's not even that. S.J. He's played in sixteen high school football games. Fode's played in five. That, that, that's a huge difference. Yeah, you know, right. experience is everything. So Big difference um, between a 15-year-old and an 18 or a 19-year-old. It's, it's, it's frustrating. Where I was 22 <laughs> when I graduated. Best three years of my life was high school. Tenth grade. Ten, was, <laughs> best three years of my life was 12th grade. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but, you know, they, everybody else has their bullets, so to speak, and their yeah. gun, and, and, and we don't. Um, yeah. And not saying anything negative about our kids, those, fr- those three freshman offensive line we started for the last eight weeks – they're going to be really good yeah, football players, sure. um, and you know. But it's just it's where we're at. We can't make any excuses, and uh, you know, next man up, and we got to play the next play. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to the chalkboard here in just a few minutes, but I want to say a lot of people are tuning in. Thanks for all the listeners and and uh, uh, and folks that are watching the live stream. I, 
it, it, it's building and building. And, and we got costumes now, folks. Yeah, we got our costumes We're hitting on. the big time. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> Went to uh, one of the local hamburger places, Camp House Burger, I think is the name of it. Kenny, you tell me that. He's saying, yeah, uh, there were 10 people in there, and four of them watched the show. So, and, and everybody's coming up. I, I felt like I was going to have to start doing autographs. Oh, there or something. you go. But people were really responding positive <laughs> about it. And I heard a local show the other day, and they mentioned our broadcast and all that. And that all goes to Leanne Biggs and, and of course, uh, Kenny Man, uh, Kenny getting his first class. So I, I just wanted just a, a add a boy and a pat on Kenny's mm -hmm. back. And uh, I think everyone, Dr. Locke wants us at the away games. Used to, I'd come in and announce football game, go home, travel every now and then. But now she wants us there, so we're going to do it. And, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, and flat and join it. Thanks to Bill Hertzog for filling in to, uh, for Coach Delaney over here. Uh, yeah. It's played by he had, had a baby shower off. or something. <laughs> so you gotta love it. <laughs> so we'll be right back. We're back with Coach Massey. We're going to get on the board and talk a little bit. But first, people, if you watched last, if you didn't watch last week, shame on you. If you watched last week, if not, go back and watch it. And then you happen to watch the Georgia-Texas game um, the next day. Everything Coach drew up there, Georgia ran on offense. Backing it up, looking at it, thinking, you know, they used that H-back in motion mm -hmm. to block offside. Then they ran the cutback. They ran inside zone, outside zone. They ran the boot mm -hmm. twice. Yep. Quarterback pulled it twice. You ought to watch the show, uh, folks, just to uh, learn some football. But we're going to be simple today uh, and talk about how you attack cover three. Um, you know, when you do my little, my little spiel on defense, you do, when you start a defense, you set your defense up yep. by level yep. three first. Am I going to cover it with two guys or three guys? You use three guys, well, that takes one away from mm -hmm. here, which then dictates your, your, your first level, then your second mm -hmm. level. Um, but with that cover three, there are weaknesses. Yep. And passing guys like you, folks, watch this, and you're going to see it on Saturday, I guarantee you. Um, talk to us about cover three and how you attack it. Well, cover three um, is exactly what it says it is. You've got three deep guys. So if you split the field up, and I'll just draw some hashes here just to give everybody an yeah, idea. Sure. But you've got especially high school, the field is divided into three e evenly spaced sections. So you talk about cover three, he's going to have everything from the sideline to the hash. This free safety is going to have everything in between the hash. And then this corner is just like the other corner. He's going to have everything from the sideline to the hash. Um, and, and zone cover. It's zone cover. So your eyes are on the quarterback. You know, that's how we teach right. it. Um, you're sitting there, you're trying to read the quarterbacks. And he's eyes. peeking back at number one mm -hmm. or number two or that's somebody right. looking for somebody to come mm -hmm. into his zone. And, you know, you, you can, as, as how we do it is, you know, we're playing cover three, but this is what they like to do out of this. So we'll, sure. we'll try to give our guys, like, you know, if he wants to push you vertical right there, you've got to go with him. But you know that, hey, if he's pushing vertical with number one, guess what? Something's coming underneath sure. or something's coming across here. So we try to cheat him. But, um, you know, any cover three defense are going to have three deep um, with four underneath. That's right. how most standard, people right, standard, right. standard want to do it. This guy is going and, – and they play these guys – um, at different, uh, different places um, in different ways. Some will say, hey, we're going to hold the curl and then we're going to drive when the ball's in the air in the flat. Mm -hmm. This guy is going to have anything in what we call the hook space right in here. And this is also considered the hook space. Same thing here. He's hook, he's curl, and then he's driving late on the flat. So kind of like this, you've 
sort of divided the field yes. up. Yes, and we're so trying a certain to, area we're trying to cover here. a large area with just seven defenders. Right. Uh, and that's the whole point of, of zone. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of how we like to attack, uh, you know, any type of three deep coverage, most of our stuff is going to be predicated on reading one or two guys. Right. Um, you know, if we're wanting to, to read the corner, we're going to try to get some type of vertical stretch on him. So when I say vertical stretch, we'll run a hitch in front of him and then run a, 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 a corner route on him. So he's no either going to... That that was, that's what y'all were running the end zone when yes. uh, once mm -hmm. they went and got yeah, he, that touchdown. And, and, yeah. he ran he ran the wrong route. <laughs> right. you know? um, but it, it's it's a great. I mean, Steve Sprayer, you know, he's kind of the one that that came up with this concept. They call it a smash route, that's crash right. route, you know, a high low Smashes, route, any, yeah, that's what, anything what like that. So um, this has been really good for us, and I guarantee you, every football team, high school, college, NFL, they're running a version of this. Sure. Um, and, we, and we like to do a lot of different things with, with trying to run with motion, and I'm not going to kind of get into all that. Uh, but this is probably our go-to. But we're just trying to high-low this corner right here. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that we like to do is, I mean, how, how often do you make that throw as opposed to 90% of throw? the time. Right. If, and so we, you're just taking the gimme. And we teach, we teach Will. You know, he's sitting here. He's reading that corner. I'll, I'll face the camera right here. So he's sitting there reading the corner. And if that corner takes one step back, we're getting rid of the ball there now. There you go. Sure. Um, so, so it's just a five-yard gimme based on him because you know and he's going to get there and, late. And, and this might be getting a little bit more in-depth, but we're, we're, we teach Will, look out there, where, what is his leverage? Is this guy inside and where are his eyes? If he's inside leverage and his eyes is on that guy, we can kind of speed up the decision-making. We know that he's probably in man, man coverage. Sure. Uh, so we want to look at that. If he jumps out immediately, he can get that ball out as quick as mm -hmm. possible. If this guy is outside leverage and his eyes are on the quarterback, I know that it's zone. It could still be that throw, but I'm looking to throw this now. So his pre-snap read is man or zone. Man or zone. Just try to – and Standard. We, we teach him uh, – that's not the first thing. The first thing he's going to look at is, is it too right. high. Is there somebody lever? in the middle of the field? Yeah, and then right. I'm going to look at the corners, see what their alignment are, where mm -hmm. are their eyes. Um, the next thing that we like to do is kind of a horizontal stretch, but we'll run – a five-step slant here and a shoot route right here. And we're trying to horizontally read this guy. Is he going to vacate because he is this zone to this zone? How deep is he? He's going to be at five yards. Um, so w what is he trying to do? Is he going to play that? Well, we're just fixing to slip it out there to our slot receiver right. who's a quicker guy, catch it, try to get up the sidelines. Look, w all we want is four yards he, on this play. Well, he'll honor that because he can't take He's the chance that you're not going to run there. You know, and this is the, the beauty of offense, but also the beauty of defense. But remember, he has all this area yeah. deep. Right. So he's looking at that. If he gets a vertical push, he's more than likely in cover that's three. Right. He's got to honor sure. that vertical push right sure. there. And that's the, the problem that you get into. And we had some issues early. If you do this and you run that slant too short, that corner can now drive on it. Right. Um, but you've got to get a vertical push to make him think that you're going vertical. That way he can't drive on it. You do something with one of these guys to keep him from. We do. Um, we, we run, you know, a little option route Something right here, to hold him. Um, or we may put him in protection. It really depends on what they try to do in this box. Are they going to try to bring double A gap pressure, or are they going to try to loop this guy in and bring him off the edge, or are they going to try to sit in zones? Um, but if if we want to influence these guys, we'll probably throw some of our, our, our other stuff where we're trying to you know hit it in the middle. Yeah. In high school, these guys just aren't very good at getting you know Not underneath there. those those hook and. Uh, hook and dig areas. Right. Um, but those are two really good that we've had a lot of success with this year. So he's got to make that throw. No, Because you know he's a curl guy. We want him to throw this right off Behind of his, his ear. ear hole. Yeah. Um, so like we, we were working it yesterday. If that guy drives now, that ball ought to be coming right off of his helmet. Trying to beat sure. him into that hole sure. with the football. Yeah. Um, but they still, you know. And you got drills, I'm sure, that work yeah, and, every day. And, and here's the beauty, you know, when we're in this, these guys are so concerned with, okay, with run and dive that we do like to throw this under center a good bit five step just drive. to hold him so that you he three can. Three or five steps? We're back. three step. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. It just times up. Tell them well what the that means. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So, you know, when you get your three step with a quarterback, he's taking 
two big steps with a with one gather, and then he's getting the ball out immediately. Just and it's just to get him away from the line of scrimmage so that he can throw that ball. If he just rose up and threw it now, he's going to have linemen being pushed. Somebody's going to be in his face. So sure. we, we give him a, a three step drop just so that he can get away from the line. And also, I think it helps. That's why I like I like being in the gun when we throw the football as a former quarterback. You can see everything. You can read a it while better. you look. You peek yes. both. One eye on the ball and the, one eye. The there, only so. negative thing about the gun is you have to take your eye off of the defense to catch that snap. Yeah. That is a negative about it, which that's why I think as a coach, you've got to be able to go between being under center throwing the football and in shotgun throwing the football. Because you'll and you'll notice mm-hmm. uh, when the guy's under the center, just people watching the game on TV, their three or five step drop, they're already looking at their read. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're dropping back and looking at that read right there. So on the way back, when they get settled, they pretty much yep. know what they're mm-hmm. going to do with the ball. And then kind of off of off of uh, those two routes, one that's really big for us, and it's it's kind of a vertical and a horizontal stretch. But we'll take a stem in here, push this guy to 14 yards in the curl, and then he'll run it out. But we're still trying to pick on this guy. We try to keep the reads. I know we do read the corner a little bit. It's not, it's not, it's very rare that we read the corner. We're trying to pick well, on this sure, guy as sure. much as He's possible. He's the easiest read you got. It is still a horizontal. He has to make a decision. It is, a, a, verti- it is a vertical read, but it is a horizontal stretch right here. So if Yeah, because you're running this, his zone is here mm-hmm. to here. Which one, and so you got a guy in the, one end of the zone, mm-hmm. one guy in there. So yep. which, you know, which mm-hmm. one you going to take? That's right. And it opens up holes. Yes, you have to worry about this guy, but we do like trying to do some type of here. Sure, any forward motion, you know, anything we're, at all. We're, yeah. we're trying to, to play action fake to widen that hole there to throw that ball. If he just ball. glances for That's a it. second, mm-hmm. he won't get Well, there. you know, if a team is a, a, a split four or a four two five, the the most vulnerable play to them is isolation weak. So right. if we can get that isolation right. going and we're hitting it, he's got to fit now. He's got to respect that isolation look here. So now that gives us a leg up to throw that sure. curl off of that. Sure. Sure. We used to run the sprint draw mm-hmm. to freeze him. Mm-hmm. All right, folks, maybe you got something out of it. Uh, pay attention. Run it back again. It's only a couple of minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We get goes to talking, man. He's going to talk some ball. Um, and see if you see all this on Saturday because, you know, it's everybody does it. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Appreciate it. Thank you.